Hello, and welcome back to my Fire Emblem 8 0% Growth Reverse Recruitment LTC. I'm Osve, and today we're going to be looking at Chapter 18. Chapter 18 is a pretty unique map. It is the last route map in the whole game. Uh, and it is also infamous for a particular gimmick. That gimmick being that like 90% of the starting enemies are all eggs that can't move, can't attack, and slowly hatch into gorgons if you give them enough time. This poses some unique challenges, uh, specifically the fact that they are eggs that can't attack us. Uh, if you remember when I was complaining about the two troubadours in chapter 15 that were annoying to kill because we had to go out of our way to attack them on player phase? Uh, it's like that, except there's 24 of them, and they also can't move. Uh, so yeah, this is gonna be, uh, a map that kind of comes with its own unique challenges. Something else that makes this map particularly challenging is that the eggs are spread out pretty far throughout the map, and the actual terrain of the map means that it's kind of difficult to get to each individual corner, so... A big part of planning this chapter out was focusing a lot on movement. And so, you know, pretty much all of our units that we could choose are all our highest move, you know, cavaliers and flyers. With the exception of, you know, our dancer and uh, the three bishops that we have that, you know, provide their own unique contributions to combat uh, and or utility. Uh, this is also the second chapter where Boots Amelia saves us a turn over, you know, say giving the boots to Erica instead. And that is mostly because we get a lot more warp uses. Uh, my last chapter 16 clear used three warps, we use only one uh, with the Boots Amelia clear, and so that gives us a lot more warp to work with. Uh, we also just got rescue last chapter, which I didn't really talk about. Uh, but since we didn't let any of the villagers die, we got Rescue, which is just another movement option, and it is at a slightly lower staff rank as well, so it, we were able to use it with Mulder. Uh, but yeah, a big part of clearing this map efficiently and eventually getting the four-turn clear that we are going to be getting uh, was based around just planning out movements and getting all of our units to those eggs by turn four. Combat in particular is very tight since, like I mentioned, we have to kill, you know, each of the 24 eggs on player phase. They're not going to be doing us any favors, and so, you know, pretty much any time we can, we're going to be avoiding attacking the, you know, actual enemies that can move around the map as long as we can find a way to counter and kill them on enemy phase. Uh, we're going to instead focus on, you know, attacking the eggs whenever we can. The first turn was almost entirely dedicated to just getting our units, you know, off the ground moving since we start so far from the rest of the map and kind of in a little isolated corner. Uh, notably, we did warp Mulder to the bottom right area of the map. He is going to pretty much single-handedly be taking care of this bottom area. He can take out, you know, all three of those eggs over the next three turns and then has uh, good enough combat to handle all of the monsters that are down there as well. Uh, in the meantime, on turn two, everyone else started to, you know, actually really start spreading out and splitting off into their own little groups. Uh, we warped Erica up top. That was something that we were only able to do because of Boots Amelia, not just like having the extra warp uses, but actually getting Amelia up to that same area uh, on turn two as well. In my previous five turn clear, I actually had to warp Amelia carrying Artur on turn two up there. Uh, but since she has the boots, and since we gave her a rescue on turn one with Mulder, uh, she was able to easily reach that on her own just by moving uh, all 10 tiles both turns. Tana is actually having a, a meaningful contribution outside of doing rescue drop stuff for the first time in a while. Uh, you love to see it. There definitely are some benefits to having the route map be, you know, full of eggs. 
you know, pretty much any unit that can get to them can kill them uh, in one round. They also give a flat 50 XP to whoever kills them. Altogether, this means that this map it serves as a, a pretty good spot to get any, like, last minute training you need to do. You know, whether that be getting more levels on Cormag, which is going to be very nice, or grinding up weapon XP to get our carry up to S rank, you know, swords for the next chapter, which is also something we're going to do. <laughs> uh, one thing I will say, though, is that this is generally going to be a pretty unreliable clear. Pretty much everything needs to go right to get out of here in four turns. You will specifically notice Erica crits two gargoyles, and they're both pretty uh, low odds crits. By getting these low percent crits, Erica is, you know, basically just able to ensure that she's the one that gets the kills and the weapon XP from the gargoyles. And that kind of ties into uh, when I mentioned that doing the Boots Amelia clears kind of makes the weapon XP training arc for Erica a lot less reliable. I think the biggest improvement that I could have made to make this more reliable is by giving the second energy ring to Erica instead of giving it to Cormag in chapter 14, which I didn't really talk about because it wasn't really relevant and it won't really be relevant until some late game boss kills that Cormag is a part of. But I do think it would have boosted reliability a bit since it would have meant that Erica could have much more reliably killed all four of the heroes in chapter 17. So yeah, just a little boost to reliability there that I think could have been optimized a little bit better. All that being said though, we should be wrapping things up pretty soon. We finally got our units spread out enough that they are pretty much all in position to finish off the rest of the eggs on the next player phase and then take out the rest of the enemies uh, on the upcoming enemy phase because like I said, we can't really afford to use any of our limited action economy fighting enemies that we would otherwise be able to counter and kill on enemy phase. Speaking of enemy phase, the upcoming enemy phase to finish off the map is quite unreliable. Probably one of the more unreliable enemy phases in this entire run up until this point. First of all, Erica is going to be fighting uh, those three spiders that just spawned in. And for each one, she needs to first dodge their attack and then get one out of two killing edge crits on the counter to kill them in one round. This is kind of just necessary to finish off her weapon rank training arc. I think it just barely gets her to S rank by the end of the map. And that was another reason why using that energy ring on her instead and getting that extra weapon XP in the last chapter would have made this uh, a little bit more reliable because I don't think we would have had to feed every single kill to her. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, and then there's another unreliable aspect to this enemy phase. We're not done just yet. Uh, there's also Vanessa who got dropped down to 6 HP by the Lava Tile uh, last turn. She needs to dodge a Mogul's relatively accurate attack and then hit both of her javelins uh, on the counter to kill the Mogul. So, you know, just a bit more unreliability there, because why not? I am much more happy, though, that I was able to just get this four turn clear at all, which I'm, you know, much more happy to show off. There is also, <laughs> I made a silly little mistake here that I am just now seeing now that I'm doing commentary. Uh, I rescue Seth here to dance him so that he can take out that last egg. I think, looking at it now, I think I could have just full moved Natasha, danced Natasha, and then had her take out the egg. And that would have saved one rescue use, which is actually pretty important because, uh, if you didn't notice, it puts us down to one rescue staff use, and we need it for chapter 19, so we have to... It makes the chapter 19 clear a lot more involved and complicated because we need to start off the turn one because we're clearing it in one turn, uh, spoiler alert, but we need to hammer it on turn one and that just makes it a lot more complicated. But you know what? I think that's fine. I'm not too upset about it. It just makes the chapter 19 clear more interesting. But yeah, that was chapter 18 in four turns. I will see you guys next time.